Spoiler alert, you actually enjoy a movie more when it's spoiled. Get it? I said spoiler alert, and then the thing I said was about spoilers. Oh, oh, so clever. No one in the history of leads has ever nailed a lead the way I just nailed that lead. Oh my God. I also could have opened this video by actually spoiling a hot new movie like The Rise of Skywalker or whatever, but I promise I will not do that. First of all, because I haven't seen it yet, so I can't spoil it. And second of all, because that's a real dick way to make a point. Uh, but you'd be surprised at how many articles I said that gleefully did it anyway. Uh, anyway, this research comes to us courtesy of psychologists at UC San Diego, where Professor Nicholas Christenfeld gave a bunch of subjects short stories to read. For half of those subjects, he accidentally spoiled the story during his introduction of it. The other half just read it with fresh eyes. Even with stories that were whodunits or that contained ironic twists, the readers who were spoiled found the story significantly more enjoyable than the people who weren't spoiled. Even when the researchers stopped the subjects halfway through the reading, the spoiled group was enjoying the story more. This is obviously shocking and upsetting to many people. In the age of the internet, spoilers are these dangerous things that many, if not most people, avoid at all costs. I have a very personal relationship with spoilers myself. Uh, if I know I want to see a film or read a certain book, I will avoid any previews or reviews or any other information about it. Even if it's not a spoiler, I know I'm going to go see it anyway, so I would rather just go in completely fresh. I don't need to be sold on it. Uh, that said, if I do know the twist or ending to a book or a movie, it generally doesn't stop me from consuming it anyway, because I have always steadfastly held onto the belief that if a work of art is only worthwhile due to a plot twist, then it's probably not worth my time. I'm looking for well-crafted characters, good dialogue, immersive sound and music, or at the very least, Jason Momoa with his shirt off. I mean, no spoiler can ruin any of those things. But I do appreciate that other people are much more concerned about spoilers, and they view spoilers as completely ruining their enjoyment of things, which is why when men send me nasty messages, I will sometimes send them spoilers in response. That My favorite being back when Game of Thrones was good, uh, I had read all of the books, so I knew what was going to come in the show. So a man would write to me, like, I hope you get raped by illegal immigrants. And I would respond with character X is going to kill character Y with a crossbow while he's on the toilet, uh, probably in next week's episode. And then the man would block me and I would be filled with the holy light of justice. That is the closest I've ever come to knowing what Joan of Arc must have experienced. I saw this study pop up over on the R Science subreddit, and it was kind of hilarious because almost immediately it got downvoted to the depths of hell. And it's currently at zero right now, which is the lowest score that Reddit will show. The science subreddit is usually very good in that only bad or old and useless science links get downvoted or deleted, and off-topic discussion is kept to a minimum. So I read through the comments on this post, um, expecting to see someone critiquing the study to the point that it would uh, have earned those downvotes, but nope, pretty much... Every comment was just someone saying, this is wrong because I hate spoilers. That's not science. In fact, those people are only confirming what the study says, which is that most people do say that spoilers ruin their enjoyment. And then when tested, those people actually enjoy things more when they're spoiled. That's fun science. Like when something we all thought was one way is actually another way. It's like that research that shows that sugar doesn't actually make children hyperactive. You can downvote that as much as your little downvote finger can handle because you saw some kids running around after they had some cake at a birthday party, but that doesn't actually mean that you accurately assess the situation you saw and that the scientists who study sugar's effects on the body for a living are wrong and dumb. 
So am I saying that I think that everyone would be better off if everything were just spoiled? No. Uh, I'm just saying that if you're going to argue about a scientific paper, bring some fucking science to the table. Allow me to offer my own critique uh, using reason. So I don't doubt that the researchers achieved the results that they say they reached. Uh, and I do think that those results are interesting. But I also think that there are some issues that bear keeping in mind. First of all, the minor but obvious issue. These people weren't choosing what book to read or what movie to watch. They had to read a short story for a study. So having it spoiled didn't affect whether or not they would choose to spend their time and energy on it. If you are spoiled, you are going to be more choosy about whether or not you're going to actually see something. As a fucking hilarious example, allow me to show you one of my new all-time favorite comments on Reddit. This user with 23 upvotes says, I haven't seen Citizen Kane, but I know what Rosebud is. That's why I won't bother watching it now. Like, holy shit, imagine valuing spoilers so much that you refuse to watch what is widely, correctly or not, considered the greatest piece of cinema in human history because you already know that Rosebud is the name of his fucking sled. Please print this comment on my gravestone. Turn it into a liquid and inject it into my veins. Thank you. So yeah, spoilers might ruin things for people simply because they make a person decide that that's the only thing that was worth watching uh, in that movie, so they'll avoid seeing it. That means something. Second of all, let's say that I offer you a choice between two experiences. Experience A and experience B. Also, let's say I'm an omniscient deity for reasons. Uh, I tell you two things about these experiences. Number one, you will like experience B slightly more than experience A. Second of all, if you choose experience A, you can later try experience B as well. But if you choose experience B, you will never be able to try A and you can only try B for the rest of eternity. So which would you choose? Me? I would choose experience A because I'm a curious person and also I derive additional enjoyment from exposing myself to a diversity of experiences. I enjoy reading books more than I enjoy playing video games, but I enjoy doing both of those things more than I would enjoy only being able to read books for the rest of my life and never being able to play video games. See what I mean? My point is this. There is only one chance for you to experience a book, film, podcast, video game, song, whatever, for the first time. And that experience will always be a different kind of enjoyment than the one you get from revisiting those things later. Yes, later you can appreciate the finer details of how a writer or director gets us from point A to point B. You can pick out Easter eggs. You can really soak in more than you did the first time around. But that first time will always have a special place in your heart. If someone were to weigh your total enjoyment in a pure utilitarian sense, they might find that scientifically you enjoyed the sixth sense more on your second watch. After all, the first time around, maybe you just thought it was a standard horror suspense film. So you weren't all that keen on it until, bam, you realize with the twist how great it is. And the second time you had a blast picking out all those little things that you can't believe you missed the first time around. And it's just so satisfying watching it all come together. But there's something really special and wonderful about watching it for that first time unspoiled. And you can never do that again. And that brings to mind a phrase that I hear quite often and I even used myself recently. Damn, I envy you for getting to enjoy this for the first time. I uh, had a friend say it to me when he introduced me to John Roderick and the Long Winters. Uh, I said it recently to someone about reading Jeff Vandermeer's Annihilation. Sure, if someone were to have explained every detail of that book to me before I read it and stopped me in the middle and gauged my enjoyment and compared it to someone who hadn't been spoiled, I might have rated it higher than them. 
But I would never have that memory of putting it all together and soaking it in step by step the way the author intended. And that memory has brought me a, a great amount of joy over the years. And that's worth something. As usual, I do want to put in this disclaimer. I'm not saying this study is bad. It's not. I find it very interesting how and why people find interest in a work of art. And I do think it's worth remembering that a well-made work of art is not just about its broader plot points. I would love it if this research makes people, like the aforementioned Redditor, reconsider whether they may have been rash in thinking that Citizen Kane isn't worth their time because they know what Rosebud means. Holy shit, that will never stop being funny to me. I'm sorry. Uh, that said, the headline of this study and the way it's being represented is just wrong. Uh, this study does not tell us story spoilers don't spoil stories. And the study author even unintentionally spells that out in this university press release when he says, people watch these movies more than once happily and often with increasing pleasure. You can't really appreciate increasing pleasure if you don't start at some baseline. That most enjoyable baseline for a lot of people, myself included, is seeing something for the first time with fresh eyes. So keep avoiding spoilers and keep not spoiling things for other people. If for no other reason than they don't want you to, they can always watch it again after they've been spoiled by actually experiencing the film or book or whatever it is they want to experience. Unless they're sending you rape threats, at which point, please spoil away because that's hilarious. 